What's up, everybody? I'm back. Um, Justin here. We're going to dive back into the CD collection. I know it's been a couple of weeks. Um, I've been busy. I've been super, super busy. Uh, a lot going on and not a whole lot of time or energy to come up here and do this. But uh, I hope you enjoyed the last video about all the stuff I bought on vacation. Um, don't have anything new coming in the mail right now. I've been trying to hold off on buying shit. Um, I had a stack of CDs in my room here. I mean, probably 100 CDs that I had either bought or that were in my car that I took out to put away. And once I filed them back on the shelves, my CD shelves are about 95, 97% full. So a handful more CDs and I'm gonna be completely full and then I'm not gonna have anyone to put CDs. So is that a good problem to have? I don't know. So into the CDs, first we are listening to Kiss, rock and roll over. I don't have to say much about it. I like Kiss, I've talked about it in the past. And this rules. So I'm going to turn it up a little bit. Because my favorite Kiss song of all time is coming up after this song. So, um, yeah. Okay, so into the CDs. We're in the G's. And uh, we're going to stay in the G's this time. So first, I have two discs by Gorgoroth. Um, I'm not the biggest Gorgoroth fan. And it's not for, like, I don't dislike Gorgoroth for any reason. I like Gorgoroth. I've just, these are the two that I've bought along the way, and I've never seen anything else in front of me that, like, hey, I need to buy it. I like Pentagram. I like Antichrist. Um, I don't know them as well. I have the demo. I have the original demo that I showed in a video not too long ago. And Gorgoroth is just good, nasty, grim black metal. But the first one I ever got was Insipid Satan, and I got it when it came out. So... 2000. It was the new Gorgoroth CD at the time, and I snagged it, and I know there's some Gorgoroth purists who don't like this record, and, um, you know, I don't know, man, I don't know enough, I don't listen to enough Gorgoroth to make an opinion on how I like this one compared to the other ones, but I like it. Gorgoroth is a grim, nasty black metal band, but they have a very distinct sound, um, but... I uh, I like this record. I haven't listened to it in a long, long time, but I like it. Um, Destroyer, or about how to philosophize with a hammer. Of the two that I've got, this is my favorite. Uh, this record is just pure chaos, and uh, I really, really like it. The first time I heard it, the first time I got it, it was just wild. It was just it was unlike any black metal that I listened to at the time. And this one came out in '98, and I got it early 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 2000s so it's been a long long time um but i like this record i like it a lot and i want to say that gall is not on this one i know a lot of people don't like gall um gorgoroth but it doesn't even say who is on this one looks like Grolic is the singer Anyway, Gorgoroth, I like them. If I ever see the older CDs, I'll buy them. Uh, I'm not going to go out of my way to get them. So next we have um, two CDs by Goreality. We have Perverse, Depraved, Indifference. And then this is a split, Goreality and Clit Torture. Uh, and Goreality is just... A super brutal, techy, slammy death metal band. Just a gurgly death metal band. Um, both of these came out on Pathos Production, so guess where I got them? The Giant Train. But I've listened to those. They're, you know, they're. If I want that kind of stuff, usually I'll grab a stack of brutal death metal CDs, and those may or may not be in that stack. So then we have Gorephobia um, with. Uh, apocalyptic Necromancy. Now, Gorephobia is a band from that early New Jersey death and black metal scene that spawned Immolation and Incantation and uh, so many bands back then. And Gorephobia has links to both of those bands. Most notably, Alex Books has played guitar for both of them. He's currently the, the uh, rhythm guitar player in Immolation and he's killing it. This record came out uh, several years ago, like maybe like 2010 or something. A while back, 
Um, and at the time, it was their newest full length. And it came after a period of uh, silence. And I have listened to this once or twice. I bought it. Said, oh, you know, Gorphobia, they fall into that same, you know, line of bands. There's no track list in here, or no uh, band lineup in here. Oh, there it is. Um, 2010, yeah. So, I mean, this is eight years old. They haven't done anything since this record. And I listened to this a couple of times, but it never really stuck with me. I need to give it another shot. I've got a couple of uh, Gorphobia records, and I've got a, a, a Gorphobia 7-inch. And they're one of those bands that just... They're different. They're really, really different, and you can owe all that to Chris Gamble. Uh, he's he's kind of left of center with, with metal, and I don't mean this in a bad way, um, but Gorephobia is a band that I just, it never clicked with me the way other bands of their peers did, but um, total support for them. I just need to listen to that more. Then we have Gormit. Uh, with Darkness of the Dead. Uh, Gormit was a Swedish death metal band, and they are one of those Swedish death metal bands that, like, they sound like the blueprint for Swedish death metal. And I'm actually quite pleased to see this on my shelf. Just the other day, I was on Instagram, and someone had posted a Gormit shirt for sale. And I was like, man, that shirt looks fucking badass. I was like, I used to have that Gormit CD, and I don't have it. And I'm weird about, I don't want to buy a shirt from a band that I don't or that I don't own their music. And I didn't, I really liked that shirt. It was a bootleg, um, like all shirts are these days. And so that shirt's really rad, but I don't have any Gormit material, and I'm just, I don't want to buy a shirt of a band that I don't own their material. And then lo and behold, this is sitting on my shelf. I thought that I sold it. Um, I thought that I had several of them in a distro, and I thought I had oversold so I mailed somebody my personal copy, which I've done more times than I like to admit. Um, but lo and behold, here it is. So I am going to listen to this in my car today because this shit fucking rules. And um, this is a compilation. It came out, uh, I don't know, five, eight years ago. Uh, Necro Harmonic out of Jersey. Shout out to Roy. I, uh, I talked to Roy from Necro Harmonic on the phone the other night for like an hour. I've been doing some design stuff with him. Um, but this shit fucking rules. It is just, you know, dirty old Swedish death metal. You know, the way that the best bands did it. And this was a band that flew under the radar. And shout out to Necro Harmonic for picking up bands like this and Crematory and putting their shit out there again for people. Like me, who, I mean, I've been into metal for a long time, but I didn't know what Swedish death metal was when this shit was around. So then we have Gortuary with Awakening Pestilent Beings. And this is another just super brutal death metal CD. And I really like this band. Uh, Gortuary is one that when I'm in that brutal death metal mood, this one always gets pulled. Um, they have several records. Uh, and I thought I had more than one of them, but I guess I'm wrong. It's so easy to get these bands that have gore in the name mixed up. Uh, but I've mentioned before, I did a big trade with Severed Records several years ago. Not the big trade that I talk about in every video, but a big trade. Um, a big trade with Severed. And I uh, got a bunch of, you know, albums like this. Anybody new to my channel or hasn't watched the older videos, I did a gigantic trade several years ago with a label that I'm not real fond of anymore. The person I'm not real fond of. And uh, through a series of circumstances, I ended up with like 200 releases. Hundreds of CDs from this guy. And uh, I kept just about one of everything in my collection. And uh, half of it I've never even opened. So as I go through my CD uh, collection, you'll see me pull out CDs and mention, oh, this is from The Trade. But uh, this is from a different trade when I used to do a distro, and I did a trade with Severed, and I got this, and I love it. So, Gortuary, killer, killer, super brutal death metal. Um, then we have another one from one of those trades, and this is Goratory with Orgasm Induced Diarrhea. So that is a pleasant experience, I'm sure. 
And um, I listened to this just recently, and um, it is just nasty, old, brutal death metal. Uh, this came out 2002, so it's got that kind of late 90s, like, Midwestern, dirty, death metal, brutal death metal sound, like Deaden or Lividity or Anal Blast. I kind of, all those bands make me think of that time. You know, like bands that played Milwaukee Metal Fest in the late 90s at like 11 o'clock in the morning. But, Goratory, that's a cool name. Orgasm Induced Diarrhea, sure it's fun. Then, we have Gospel of the Horns. With Realm of the Damned. Um, Gospel of the Horns. They're an Australian black death metal band. Kind of thrashy. And those of you who watch my channel. Thrashy stuff is not really my cup of tea. Um, and I like Gospel of the Horns. But I'm not a crazy huge big fan. Um, picked this up when it came out. I used to buy and trade a lot with uh, Hell's Headbangers. Um, first show my band ever played... By Ten years ago, we played a fest with Gospel of the Horns. Um, but, uh, so I don't really know much about this record. I want to say that this is the most recent thing they've done. Uh, it's a really, really heavy cardstock paper. Um, man, Hell's Headbangers, they really, they do shit right, man. They, they put some care into their stuff. Um, I'm not always crazy about their, like, graphic design. Uh, but that's just me being the anal graphic designer. But uh, Gospel of the Horns, they're a band that, you know, they need to be respected. They've been around forever. And they're fucking sick at what they do. So, total support to them. I need to listen to them some more. So then we've got Grandiose Malice. Uh, I mentioned this CD um, several weeks ago when I got it in a new stuff update. And I've since listened to it a couple of times. And um, Steve from uh, Black Witchery, who died a couple of years ago, this was his project. And the story is that he was working on this, and they had a bunch of stuff recorded, and then he died. Um, but then, so some people finished it, organized it, and put it out. And it's, just, it's a good, like, thrashy, kind of black thrashy death metal thing um i haven't put enough time in it to really garner an opinion yet but uh it's good it's really good and it's a testament to steve childers to trujenda so you know hate that he's gone um but uh you know that's why we do this we do this music so we'll fucking live on through the music you know so all right last up this is gonna ruffle some feathers grand Belial's key um, I absolutely fucking love Grand Belial's Keep. And when this came out, Judeo Beast Assassination, uh, I bought it just randomly. This came out like 02, and I remember that I kept seeing Morbun Records ads in Metal Maniacs. Um, and at the time, it was this, the first Sargeist record, uh, the first Leviathan record, uh, Jutes of Scarlet re reissues, you know, they stayed in print. And I kept seeing them every month. I'd flip past Morbon Records. And I listened to Black and Death Metal a lot, and a lot of black metal. But this was shit that was even more underground than what I was into at the time. And I really, around 2002, 2003, I had this awakening where I delved like super, super deep into the underground, reading early metal archives, reading the Mirthroth page out of Germany. Uh, I'll. If I remember, I will link that below. Mirthronk was a... Uh, it still is. It's still around. It's a online catalog of black metal bands. And I would just scroll and scroll and scroll and click and just look up bands and try to find their music online and try to find their CDs. And I discovered so much shit through that. Um, and this is before social media. This is before just talking on Facebook, before YouTube, uh, before MySpace. Um... You just had to discover shit on your own. But after a few months of seeing the Moribund ads constantly, uh, I made an order. And I remember I bought this, I bought the first Sargeist record, and I bought the first Leviathan record. And when I put Judeo Beast Assassination on, 
what poured out of the speakers was some shit I had never heard before. It's black metal, like in spirit, um, but it's almost, if you've never heard them, they have this almost like melodic heavy metal tinge to their music. Um, it's extremely well played and it has this absolutely killer organic analog production. It's a little rough, but everything is clear. Everything is concise and played well. The first song on this album, man, the Tender Hearted Manifesto, it's just the solo in it. It's, just, it's this fucking badass, like, Iron Maiden solo in the middle of this song, and there's this, like, super melodic, like, gallop bridge in it. And Grand Blyle's key is just they no one sounds like them, and no one can sound like them. Um, but they've caught a lot of shit for being anti-Semitic. And, you know, you got to take that for what it is. It's is. I'm not going to get into this political, religious debate, but, I mean, you know, they hate religion. That's what they're talking about. They hate Christ. You know, it's it's the nastiest, most just, just mockery of Christ in music you've ever heard. Um, I do not have... This is their second album, and their first album is Mocking the Philanthropist, which a lot of people say is their favorite uh but i heard it like i didn't hear it first i heard this first and it's stuck with me now for over 15 years and uh, i have mocking on vinyl i bought that and this together when they got reissued a few years ago uh and it's great but it does not hold a candle to Je to to judeo beast for me um but me and the other guitar player and father Bethal, we have spent so many hours driving to shows listening to this fucking album um, a lot of times when you, if you come to see us and you see us set our, our guitars up, I'm probably going to play the fucking opening riff from that while I sound check. It's either that or like corrosion of conformity for whatever reason. I have two riffs I like to play when we sound check, but, uh, fucking this record, man, is like, it's up there. It's way up there on my favorite albums of all time list. Um, and, uh, oh, another thing, Kaz Grant. Shout out to Kaz. Uh, Kaz is the, was the drummer and the singer on this record. And um, he's untouchable. The performance on this record is just so fucking killer. Um, and that's part of the reason why I don't like this one at all. Kosherat. So uh, in between those two records, which there was a, a, a big gap. I mean, like probably like six, seven, eight years. Um, Kaz had left. And they got a new drummer, and they got a new singer, uh, Richard Mills, who unfortunately passed away a few years ago. Not long after this came out. But Kosherat was the follow-up to Judeo Beast. And I know people who say that this is their favorite record. And uh, this is definitely like a better produced record and a a better sounding record, maybe. But man, the the hook, the uh, the melody's not in this one as much. And it doesn't have Kaz's vocals, which are so distinct. Um, and it just, there's a flat dynamic to Ghost Rat to me that just did not catch my attention. Um, I just, it never, ever, ever clicked with me. Uh, but I still, I mean, I love this band. And unfortunately, you know, they're a band that they can't go out and play often. Their shows get shut down. Um, they catch a lot of flack, man. And, some of it's warranted, some of it's not warranted. There's some there's some lines you shouldn't cross. Um But from a sonic standpoint, I just I love Granville Isles Key. And um You know, someone has to be the adversary. Someone has to stir the pot. And uh you know, I've done a little pot stirring, but just man, music's music. Take it or leave it. So that's my two cents. Um that's it for this round. We're almost done with the G's. We're almost done with one half, one side of my CD wall over there. And then we got another side to come up. So we've got a few more months of videos. I'm going to try to pump them out as quick as I can. I was doing them like every other day. And I just, I can't do it anymore, man. I've gotten too busy. So we'll see. We'll see how it comes with the end of summer and fall. How, how fast I can get them out. But I promise you, I'm going to keep them coming. I'm enjoying it. Let's talk about these releases. Let's talk about metal. Um... And uh, I'll see you guys next time. Later.